Hello, this is Achilles Kokinakis and you are listening to the Marvel Card Collectors podcast. Hello everybody, my name is Ian Taylor and welcome to the Marvel Card Collectors podcast brought to you by the Marvel Cards Fan Collective. You can find our two groups on Facebook, details of which are at the end of this podcast, so come check us out. With me is my co-pilot in all things Marvel cards. It's very late, and here's my date. It's Norin Rad. <laughs> okay, I'm with the I'm with the rhyme. I'm into it. I'm yeah, into it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It is good. I'm it is. Like it. it is late in the UK, um, right. relatively speaking. Um, it's um, after half past ten in the evening, and oh. um, so you are at the end of your working day. Yes. And uh, my working day went on late into the evening. Ask me why. Why, Ian? Why? So this is a special bonus episode, although we may release it as a regular episode. Who knows? Um, Who knows? I went to see Marvel Universe live this evening. Whoa. Oh. That's pretty badass. Yes. <laughs> and, that's pretty cool. And I can, hear, I can hear our listeners saying, what's Marvel Universe live, Ian? I mean, you um, have to be in the know. I mean, you I have to be in the about night. it personally. So, so, so there's my yeah. there's my show ticket. You can see it. Marvel Universe Live. I oh, know it's all happening. It's all happening. It's At unreal. The uh, produced by Feld Entertainment, who are my client. Um, at the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham, or Notting Nottingham, as I guess you guys <laughs> would say. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> hopefully not um and yeah it was it was it was it was a giggle it really was yeah. um it's kind of some of the um some of the listeners might have seen it because it has toured america um, oh i didn't know that. show. that's pretty yes, cool yes yes in fact this is the second marvel universe live show uh the first one toured america a few years ago and the second one finished hmm well, it's just about starting the UK, so it only finished in the US a few months ago. Wow. So it would have gone somewhere near you. It hasn't got I'm Silver sure. Surfer in. So Yeah, well it's not on my radar then. I don't yeah, know exactly. about it. It has, however, <laughs> got Black Cat in it. So it's on your radar. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't have, you have covered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To be fair, it's on my radar because as as I mentioned, I work on it. So I, uh, for those who, who may may not know, I work for a marketing agency. Uh, my background is 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 live event ticketing hmm. um and a marketing and sales strategy and customer um data and all that sort of thing so that's pretty cool um it is pretty cool um and i get to work on fabulous shows um and marvel universe live it's an absolute hoot because it's like it's like working on something you're really into that's awesome what's that's that all fantastic. about fantastic exactly um, good life <laughs> exactly which which is why it all the artists that 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 we engage with you know the ones that are really into marvel they get to do what they love <laughs> yeah seriously so you know um and um so this evening was the first uk performance i they've literally just gone out of rehearsals really? uh wow. first public performance um so i traveled up um almost three hours on the train to um wow. via our rather rubbish um train system in the uk and um yeah it was great. have a train system yeah well yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, there is that there is that um and what can i tell you fine listeners um so it's about to start two in the uk so for those of you who are in the uk or even in europe after it leaves the uk it's going into europe oh. so so folk all across france Holland, Sweden, Ireland, you know, you're going to see it soon, but, uh, but we get it in the UK first. So is everyone traveling with the show, like all the actors and the production teams? Or yeah. Do they... yeah. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, the whole thing. I mean, it's multiple articulated lowest worth of set costumes. I would think. You showed some kind of picture. I saw something. Yeah, uh, it's, it it's pretty... It's full heavy on. Heavy in production, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I had a backstage tour before the show. <laughs> nice yeah i had a little backstage tour and i briefly had and i've sent it to you but i can't publish it publish it on social media a yeah. backstage pass 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That looked really cool. Yeah, which for security reasons, I'm not allowed to post on social media. Yeah, smart. Technically speaking, I'm not even supposed to have a photo of it. So um, anyway, well, if we'll move sit, on. They're coming for you, man. Yeah, I know. They'll, they'll come and get me. They will come and get me. Um, and what else? What else? So yeah, I had a backstage tour and um, saw them all kind of warming up and doing all that. And when you say wow. actors, these guys are kind of, they're more athletes and stuntmen. Oh wow! Because it's a full on. Because the thing, is, the, the thing is, they've got to be able to do, as you know, there's, there is a little bit of suspension of disbelief because obviously they can't fly and there's no CGI, so well, there's a lot of, part of it. yeah. Okay, <laughs> that sounds um, awesome though. Um, they've got they do a lot of aerial stunts and obviously there's wires and things. There's Spider Man in it. Um, there's uh, Wasp is in this one. Oh. Doctor Strange is in this one. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is in it. Captain America, Hulk's in it. Uh, Iron Fist pops up at one point. Um, what? They got most, the whole gang in there. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, most of the Sinister Six pop up in one scene um, where Spider-Man has a quick fight with them, including Black Cat. Um, wow. She pops up. So, so my They're like doing there. what the MCU's not doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're kind of bringing it together. Well, the first two had Wolverine in what he's, he's not in this one um and he just spent pretty much most of the show just beating people up that's wolverine with his claws <laughs> <laughs> um, and um who else is in it ah uh, um nebula is in it uh, I like and nebula. loki is in it thor is oh, in it fine. um yondu oh cool it, and the ravagers um lots of chitari bad guys aka red shirts um, <laughs> and um, yeah, there, there's all sorts of stunts. There's pyrotechnics. Um, it's got a kind of a backdrop um, across the back, and they project stuff on there. Wow! So you get projections of Quinjets flying over Antarctica and into Savage Land at one point. They go to Kunlun at one point. Um, they go to Asgard twice. Um, they they're in the set design must be yes well that's the thing it's projection that backdrop oh. but then they bring stuff out on stage and they've kind of got scaffolding rigs and things like that and they can elevate people and wow, there's, cool. there's obviously hidden panels in the floor where people can do acrobatic springs and do stunts um they are see that stuff's so impressive to me yeah that's just are, so amazing yeah i mean they, they, they seriously they have a they have a physio and a whole gym that tours with them to kind of keep them wow. together because they have well to it's like a traveling stuff. circus like um it circus de, uh, i think you say it circus de soleil uh, i'm not Cirque sure de soleil. yeah okay soleil it's french so it's everyone french. has a different go at it yeah yeah but my go was horrible uh <laughs> that show is just absolutely magical mm. um and it sounds like it's very much similarly kind of the same effect where you have all these really amazing performers doing really quite spectacular things on stage and live yeah pretty they, thrilling they go at it they go at it and there's the you know there's it's very very finely choreographed there's one scene where they're all kind of juggling with fire wow like, cool. on, um which is pretty good there's a bit where rocket pulls out a, a blooming great gun and um you know does his thing. um how they do groot i don't know there's some because it is to scale they have a Wow, a, a guy in a costume, and he's obviously got some sort of stilt things going on. But he yeah, yeah. moves; he moves really quickly. Um, wow. Who else? Oh, the ki- kids yeah. must like lose. I mean, adults and families must lose yeah. their minds on that. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's fun. You know, it's a fun thing. Um, and you know, I get I get to work on it, so um, I don't get to tour around with it. Um, I'll be going to see it again next week at the London opening at the O2. Yeah. And um, so I thought, you know what, seeing as I'm away from home, I can really record of an evening. So let's take this opportunity. And here we are. Let's talk about it. So that was my evening. Um, Very cool. It's all a bit nuts, really. What about you? What You were about to tell me something before we started recording. So I thought, you know what, let's hold on to it. I'm holding. No, no, no. Tell me. Tell me. Tell you hold, now. Hold no okay. more. Okay, I'm I'm holding no more. I'm letting. No. I broke it. Let it out. Damn. Oh. Um. So. <laughs> okay. So, an awesome member of our group, awesome member of our group, named Zach, who is a rock star, and will always be a rock star in my 
uh, ledger of collectors that I keep because I keep addresses and phone numbers just in you case do. collections go missing. You do. I mean, I've seen, I've seen do this that. people. I've this, seen this, this is a book. This is a real book. Yeah. Um, as long. psychotic yeah. as that is. Yeah. Uh, and Zach, my man, Zach hooked me up and I officially have the completed um, Marvel universe, evolutionary war, silver surfer set all the way to the diamond. Wow. Okay. I, I, at this point, I'm going to have to ask, what is the evolution it's totally fine. set? It's, so, it's not on my radar at all. It's not, it's not anybody's radar unless you're a character collector, because then you're kind of stuck having to do this. Um, it is Marvel Universe. It is 2014. I could be wrong, but I was trying to look up for the date, but I can't seem to find it. Um, it's one of those sets that had the diamond parallels where you had the uh, character there that was pulled from a comic book. So you have the cutout of the character and yeah. then they highlight the issue behind that character. Ooh. And the diamond inserts were one out of 10, mm -hmm. a complete nightmare to find uh, because some people collected, some people didn't. And what's even more of a nightmare to find, which I have them all now are the rubies, which is the one I was missing. Zach, yeah. my man, Zach had one. And he had one part of a set. So if there is one out there, I need to replenish Zach set because he was kind enough to sell me the one uh, in a trade for my set. And now it is complete and it is wow. official. I am only missing eight cards for a Master Silver Surfer set. Wow, that's good going. Maybe 12 or eight. That's incredible. There, so. Well, yeah, I'm know, like 90, 90 per, 93% done. A plate for every set, not four colors for every set, but a plate for every set. I'm like 93% done. That's extraordinary going. That's extraordinary yeah. going. So, so that was pretty fun to get. Yeah, I'll say. So is this a, <laughs> is this a written house set or a? It, I think it is. I, I have it under the here. Last ones. I it is. Um, I'm I can't seem. I'm looking at Jeff's site now. I oh, know it's on, on here. Is it, is it part of the Marvel Universe? It is. Set, Let the 2014 me... one. Yes. Okay, hang on a minute. I've just, I've just, yeah, I think I've just found it. Yes, 2014 just... Marvel Universe. Okay. Yes. Okay, here we Rittenhouse go. House Archives. So, so this will be one of the last sets that Rittenhouse did then. Um, yes. Here we go. So I'm just scrolling. There down. it is. Oh, it it. Wait, Marvel 75th, that's right. So I remember Marvel 75th was an insert that was spread over multiple sets. Yeah. That's right, because I've got the black cap, one of those. Um, right. Those are nice cards as well. Tough pull. They are nice cards. Tough really pull, tough, tough pull. to find, tough to get. I still need the gold uh, Thanos and Silver Surfer, but I have the ruby of that one. Yeah. And I am looking at the set now. The rubies were pretty interesting. They were only in a the special... archive box. They're in the archive boxes, yeah. numbered to yeah. 50. So. Okay. They're impossible to find, and people usually did a full set, yeah. so no one breaks their set. And I've been searching this card maybe six, eight months, mm -hmm. um, and everyone who I found who had it, which is maybe like two or three people, if that, always had it in a set, and I yeah. could not afford to yeah. buy a full set. Yeah, I did have to buy a full set of the Thor Versus just to get the Ruby Silver Surfer. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I did. But yeah, the Diamond Parallels are 1 to 288 packs. Uh, but this is part of the Marvel Universe line, and this was 2014, written house. Here we go. Yeah, gold is two per case. Yeah, that. Yeah, the gold. I could. I can't. I don't know where that is. Yeah. So if anybody has it, I'm happy to get it from you. Well, the interesting thing that so this set for those who don't know, um, what written house did and still do actually on 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 all their products, I believe, um, they do a multi case incentive. So if if a dealer buys x number of cases from rittenhouse um i think in a lot of cases it was it was quite a high one so it was like every 15 or 18 cases the dealer would get what's called an archive box and it's a it's a regular box it just has a different wrapping around it and it says archive box under the on a piece of paper underneath the uh the wrapping um, yeah. and in the archive box you have it's not it's not packaged in the same way the normal stuff is with individual pa packs it is the um full set of cards all of yeah. the chase cards usually there's some exclusive 
exclusive artist sketches in there you might get maybe six or 12 something like that um and you'll get pretty much everything in there but because they are an an exclusive to dealers who buy so many cases they're quite expensive we're talking four figures so i'm looking on um on ebay at the moment and there's a factory sealed archive box of marvel universe 2014 for 1900 dollars. yeah so that's the kind of um thing you'd expect but in that box you do get like 20 sketch cards because someone else has done a separate listing of all 20 sketch cards they got from an archive box for a thousand dollars so and they're beautiful i mean yeah. it's really cool to get those yeah. archive boxes i always mess with getting a fantastic four archive mm. um archive box to get like the 20 sketches yeah like i can always think about it but i don't know it's just such a such a such a gamble but very cool incentive very very cool incentive mm. it's one of those things that if if i was going to do it i think i'd do it for a set that i hadn't bought anything of mm. so um so in the same way as as your 2014 marvel universe had a ruby set i believe women of marvel 2 or dangerous divas 2 maybe both of them had a ruby set that was only in the archive box i think so, so it's basically a colored parallel of the base cards but it's only available and you get the full set in one archive box. But that kind of set, Women of Marvel 2 or Dangerous Divas 2, that I don't have, would probably be the one that I would go for. Simply yeah. Because, yeah, because you're going to get the most black yeah, cats out of that. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to Google um, archive box just now and just see what, what throws up. Um, because it is Please the do. kind of thing that... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> stationary supplies okay there we go let's go on to collectibles there's a category <laughs> i've got a large <laughs> archive box like one of those ones that people carry their stuff out of the police station when they've been like uh, <laughs> picked out and they carry all their stuff out <laughs> oh. on the desk it's not one of those um here we go you know and some of them archive boxes aren't necessarily that expensive until you get onto the marvel spectrum or the sketch spectrum so for example i'm looking yeah. at here and do you remember there was a Dead Zone TV series? Oh, yeah. You know, Stephen King's Dead Zone. And it had the yeah. guy who was one of the two guys in Weird Science back in the 80s. That's right. That's right. Up. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now, I have trivia, trivia time, folks. Trivia time. <gasps> trivia time. So we know that one of them, the blonde one, kept acting, okay, from Weird Science. <laughs> the other guy didn't. Guess what he does now? What? University lecturer. He's a, a what? completely university lecturer. No or, way. Or college, as you call them in the UK. Yeah, completely out of the public eye. Like, didn't do wow. anything. I think he did, maybe did a couple of small things, and that was it. Um, wow. And very, very, very private guy. But you can see him on the alumni of uh, whatever website. You can see his like picture and his his name. Um, but anyway, but <laughs> that's random. amazing. It's random that I know that. Anyway. Um, so Dead Zone, cool, you can get Seasons 1 and 2 archive box, Rittenhouse sealed, for uh, about $300. So, you know, you can get archive boxes for other sets for che cheaper amounts of money, but obviously the Marvel ones, yeah, the money's, money's in the fact that it's got an awful lot of juicy sketch product in there. Uh -huh. um, so I'm scrolling through, and there's an awful lot of empty ones being sold, which is a bit bonkers. Um, yeah. So let's keep scrolling down. This is, this is fascinating listening for people. You know, oh yeah, archive boxes are interesting because I had no idea they existed until I started noticing the inserts were, you know, kind of only available through them. Because I was like, yes. you know, these sets were not expensive or popular, so I can't figure out why people were losing their minds. And then I realized just accessibility is not there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm going to go for highest price. I'm going to work down from there. Okay, so the highest priced mm -hmm. archive box that you can get on eBay is from Star Trek Beyond. Whoa. Rittenhouse, released in 2017. Um, and it's, it's over three grand. It's crazy. What? But it will have, like, Chris Pine's autograph in, Zachary Quinto's autograph in, Carl okay. Urban. Do you see what I mean? So it, it, yeah, I mean, that that's the incentive, right? You can't yeah. top that. Absolute top end. I'm pretty sure those sets didn't have sketches anyway let's let's actually type the word marvel in as well just to narrow this down because much as i'm sure folk enjoy hearing about chris pine's autograph and how much it costs they've actually <laughs> turned this podcast on to hear about marvel cards um that's true 
my internet is crazy slow. I'm on the hotel Wi-Fi. So Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is actually the priciest one on there. But Whoa. again, that will be autographs. Wow. That's interesting. Um, so, twenty four. yeah, that Marvel Universe 2014 is actually... Oh, I've just seen the next one down. But Marvel Universe 2014 is the most expensive one. But just underneath that, and this will be worth a punt, Marvel The Avengers Silver Age. Oh, I saw it. Oof. That's nice. That's that would be the thing to break. That's nice. Now, sometimes if the set's a bit big, they do two archive boxes. Wow. A and, a and B archive boxes. So I this, didn't know that. This, uh, yeah. Um, so hmm. this Avengers, oh, the Avengers Silver Age had comic cuts cards, I'm seeing. Ooh. I love comic card okay. cuts. Uh, Those archive cuts or comic yeah. card, cut cards, yeah. you know, they're so... I think those are like the unsung heroes. I don't know. I know there was like some controversy with them, but I absolutely adore those cards so much. They I would are. like, I would collect them. Like yeah. I would, I really would. Yeah. They're my next year thing. 2020 they, for me. That's my quest. Is That's a good cards. one. Um, I'm also getting quite, quite deeply into the idea of the coin cards that Mar the upper deck have done for two so, Marvel sets now coin cards mm. so one thing upper deck do um is coin cards but they, they've done it elsewhere for quite a while but they've started doing it on two marvel sets and they are fleer ultra spider-man mm -hmm. and captain america 75th so the fleer ultra spider-man ones you can get ones that have just got coins in and the gimmick is that it's a picture of a it's kind of got the front cover of the issue. And then it's got, if it was a 12 cents issue, it's got a dime and two, two pennies. Oh, you just traded for something. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got a couple. But that's the gimmick. The gimmick is that the coins in the card will be how much the issue cover price was. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So, it, um, so for example, some of them are uh, the later ones. Are, it's just a single quarter in there. But then Fleer Ultra Spider-Man did some that were coins and had autographs in. Oh, yeah. That's the one I'm looking at right yeah. now. Yeah, like um, Sal Buscema, um, wow. Ed that's Hannigan, um, uh, Jim Starlin's done some for Fleer wow. Ultra Spider-Man. Um, and they're pretty nice looking things. Um, I like them. I they're really like nice. See, I never understood yeah. the gimmick. Yeah. But I get it now. I, yeah. And I think it's very cool collectible. Yeah. I have to say, it took me a while. Yeah, because I haven't physically seen one. I'm only looking at the pictures on EPAX, which aren't. Yeah, there. they have to be thicker cards though, because I can see how the coins sit in there. Yeah. Um, but I like the design for the Spider-Man one. The one I'm looking at, I guess you pulled, is um, I love the webbing and all the villains surrounding. Mm -hmm. Like that's a really good design. Mm -hmm. That's a really good design. It is. It is. It's it's a nice idea. The Captain America 75th ones, I only kind of became aware of them almost by accident really because someone on one of the groups was ebaying a load of stuff and i saw them in his auctions oh wow and they they're interesting because they're not on epax that they just come up as one thing but when you scroll through the listing there are different versions of them so normally what i mean by that is normally on epax so for fleer ultra spider-man they are clearly i don't know if this is what the card numbering is but let's just say it's cc1 cc2 cc3 and you'll see them as separate items on epax mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. captain america 75th the coin card is cc0 it's yeah. just one thing but when you when you look through all the cards they're all different so oh, bizarre. wow so there's there's loads of different issues and different and they're not signed they're just coins and front cover issues but the captain america cards are, are, are much bolder because they've got that red white and blue kind of board yeah there. yeah i think um, i've seen one or two and they look so clean and they know. do um, I so, so for my money, they, they actually the coins actually work better in the design of the Captain America ones, I think. Mm. Um, even though the Spider Man ones are, are, are beautiful with the autographs. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just I just kind of dig them, but they're, they're quite tough pulls. So that's going to be a long game one. So next year, I think I'm going to start going after some comic cuts. Um, but that's cool. this listing that I'm looking at on on eBay for the Avengers Silver Age is both archive boxes A and B. Whoa! Which is which is which is pretty good value because that that those Avengers one. Here we go. 2013 Women of Marvel, 
So this will be Women of Marvel 2. Ah, this is some guy who split out just the sketch cards. So I've seen a few of those. So some people get archive boxes and they just sell the sketch cards. Yeah. A lot. Um, That's really cool. So so let me let me look at this listing because there's an awful lot of pictures <laughs> on here. Oh, there's a cat. There's a cat. Really? Yeah. I mean, he's selling it for the, the lot is 20 and he's selling it for 2,000 Australian dollars. Oh, my God. Um, well, the exchange rate is, is pretty decent. It's, it's only about 1,000 US. I'll say oh, okay. Um, oh, that, yeah, I just bought a car from Australia. I should know yeah. that. It's actually the guy you bought. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Guy. I just yeah. when you said it, I was like, I'm pretty fella. sure that's Andrew. Yeah, it is. Andrew's it is. Gem. It is. Yeah, he has great stuff, man. That 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 guy, his company, who you know, those people. Yeah. Good people. Really yeah. good people. Oh, here we go. They're two part puzzles. Yeah, it's two part puzzles. Oh. So the thing is, with the archive box, you had certain artists that did two part puzzles that were only available in the archive boxes. Oh wow. So I'm looking at here, and it's a Wagner two part sketch with MJ and Black Cat. So you've got. They're literally two separate cars, but when you put them side by side, they're joined to become a picture. That's nice. Um, puzzle sketch. I got a Charles Hall that does that, which I like from Marvel's Ooh. Greatest Battles. Wow. Yeah, Marvel's Greatest Battles was, they were all like that. They were all like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it had to be a two character thing, which is mm. why I didn't go into it for Cat. Um, mm. but, um, oh, that's right. Because, yeah. Yeah, because I like Cat on her own. I want to alter her myself. Own. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to share her. How I dare they? Yes, how dare they? Um, fantastic Here's... for oh, don't I want. Oh my god, I want Ooh, that so bad. Sealed I want case, the case of twelve boxes. Yeah, but does that bring the case incentive? No, 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 no. The the well, the archive box. You have to uh, the deal. The dealer's got those if they bought like fifteen to eighteen cases. So that's why the archive boxes are quite rare. But there is a sealed case of Fantastic Four archives on eBay. Um, this this really? episode is going to be called "We Read Out eBay Listings." Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can buy I mean, you can buy people, case for yeah. my non sports, um, who I've bought from before. Nice guy. Okay, so yeah, I didn't see the archive sticker on there, so I didn't realize that that was actually like it's not an archive box. No, the set's Fantastic Four archives. So it's uh, oh. So it's just a I don't case. Know, I keep messing it's a that case up. of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a case um, of those. But um that's a nice I would say that's worthy of a break because there were some lovely sketches in that. They really were. Every time I see the like I'm always so impressed. I always think about starting a surfer for every artist in that set. Mm. I always think about it, I always play with the idea and then I kind yeah. of back off. But yeah. most of the artists did do a surfer though. I was I've been able to see, I've been able to see enough that I oh. know that maybe counting maybe only 10 artists did it okay. from the list. So I know it's possible to get close, but Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. Well, I can get a Women of Marvel 2 mm -hmm. full Ruby parallel set. Oh. Which, um, so the Ruby parallels for that um, and for Marvel Dangerous Divas 2 were numbered to 50. So there's only 50 archive boxes out there. And the um, so that means there's only 50 Ruby parallel sets, and they're actually numbered, yeah. it says here. Yeah, um, Rubies are numbered. Yeah, yeah, so there's one for 600 pounds, which is probably about 700 bucks. What, yeah, the full set, I guess. The full set, yeah, uh, it, well, yeah, it is the full set. So they've obviously opened sense. an archive box and they're just selling off a set. I can get Marvel Dangerous Divas 2 Ruby parallel set for 300 dollars. Which wow. is actually, which is actually, that's much more reasonable. That again, that's my non-sports. Um, they're good. So, uh, yeah, yeah, they the are good. UK sellers probably a bit, bit wild with his pricing on that. In my yeah. opinion, not price. Value, yeah, but. I got the cards up here so you can see them, and we'll put them in the tasty notes. Mm. Yeah, I don't know definitely. if you wanted to see it. Definitely. But... Hang on, let me go back to my camera. Okay. Oh wow! Oh, they're nice. Oh, they are tasty. Yeah, we'll yeah. put these on the tasting notes, folks. This is a this is a joyous rainbow to behold. Yeah, so it's it's full rainbow though, full it rainbow is. for twenty fourteen. It is. I I have a feeling that's one of those things where the static images don't do it justice. Yeah, because the the diamond effect is actually pretty looks well. Like there's an here. awful lot of um yeah detail. It looks like there's a lot of depth in those cards, especially the bottom left one. Yeah, they're pretty nice. I mean, yeah. I, you know, they're nicer in person than they are pictured um but i thought this picture looked pretty good you can see mm -hmm. like the effect the hollow effect there but yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. nice size image it's cool you know you have the full rainbow all these are numbered so the greens number to 100 the reds numbered to 50 and the diamonds numbered to 10 nice and i was nice. able to get the one of 10 
for that the is diamond. Nice. That is Luckily. nice. I am. Um, I'm better in person, person than in pictures as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're always better in person, my friend. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'll tell you what I am hankering after. I've, I I need to get some written house binders because they're nice binders. Um, and I kind of feel it's it's a bizarre way that I go about collecting stuff. Um, where I know a set's got a binder, I kind of feel I have to start with the binder and the promos. Hmm. I like that. It feels like working. It feels like doing the jigsaw puzzle from the outside edges in. If that I like that sense. better. Yeah, yeah, I like that better because I don't. Yeah. Sorry. You know, it's like that Marvel Creators Collection binder that we were talking about. I love that binder on the um, on the Kevin. Kevin number one. Kevin. Episode, which dropped yesterday as we speak. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, Such a good episode. It is. Yeah, it was a hoot listening <laughs> back to it, actually. You kind of it's forget. really fun. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so that Marvel Creators Collection binder, I've got a hankering to fill it now. Um, ah, good stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to fill it with sketches because, you know, I need to eat and have a place to live. But That's um, fair. Yeah. Actually, funny enough, speaking about that, Go on. I found I found a black hole collector who knows another black hole collector. And by black hole collector, I mean collectors who grab some of the best things you've ever seen, but mm. they don't post mm. on social media. Um, not to any fault of them, they're just not into it. Yeah. Um, so I found I found one that knows the other one, and I found sketches that i thought only existed in myth really yeah oh. so that's gonna hurt oh, um geez. i don't know if it's gonna happen i, I can't give all details yet because i can't okay. tell people yeah, who they yeah, are yeah. but yeah. i found two people who do exist of things that i've been looking for for some time now and they're there and it's real and um hopefully they'll listen to the podcast and want to participate more um but very nice people um, but yeah, I'm in the middle of that and, Good. and slightly regretting it. So these are, <laughs> well, these are your grail cards, I guess, aren't they? So yeah, yeah. They're specific. I mean, they have amazing, like amazing, big, 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 big things yeah. from Marvel yeah. creators, sketchographs, like oh. old school collectors. Oh, who so have, the OG. Yeah. Premium stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. So here's, um, what was I about to say? It's gone. It's gone. It's late I, in the see, day. I interrupted people. you. That was my no, fault. No, no, no. I, I had, I had. You were talking about binders, and you I were going to get into Marvel collectors. I was going to get into Marvel collectors, and you know what? It's gone. It's gone. No, I had. There's something you were talking about, and I was, I was going to say something based on what you were telling me, and it's absolutely gone out of my head. It will come back yeah. to me. It will come back to me. It will come back to you. It's like, it's like when you're constipated. If you don't think about it, it will happen. Um, is that how you work through that problem? Yet? <laughs> <laughs> I just eat more bad food for me. I'm like, if you're not coming out, something's coming back down and we're just going to go. So I don't play. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, there's, all sorts of, now. there's all sorts of imagery going through my mind at the yeah, moment. Well, um, we'll, we'll, I don't want to we'll, get worse. We'll, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Um, we are literally talking SHIT. Right. Um, I, I've completely lost my thread. What are we talking about? We're talking about trading cards. We're talking about, talking Marvel, about trading tra cards? Marvel trading cards. How dare you, sir? There's a thing. There's a thing. Um, oh, I did get, um, okay, another one. I did on. get the Marvel buyback, Jusco, for Surfer. That's what I was going to say. I Great thought so. Minds think alike. Brilliant. Yeah. So, we were talking about, by the way, Rocky is still on telly. Did I tell you I was watching Rocky? Was no, you told me before we started recording. There we go. So Rocky I'm in a hotel room. Good. Rocky, so Creed. Yeah, Rocky one is on, and he's he's just done his thing up the steps. Where oh, he dances iconic. around at the top, and he's now going into the ring with um, the uh, Burgess. Is it Burgess Meredith plays his trainer? Yeah, I don't know. He's brilliant. Well, I don't remember oh, the actor's name. Such a good film. Such a good film. Anyway, I'm choosing to talk to you <laughs> rather than watch Rocky. That's that's how much I'm enjoying. We can it. do both, Ian. Well, well te <laughs> technically speaking, I am. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, <laughs> solid. I told you it could happen. Yeah, Ian watches TV and does a podcast at the same time. Um, <laughs> that will be in the episode description. Um, so, this is exactly what 
I was thinking about um, asking you to tell us about what happened and then what happened as a result of what happened. So I want to just first say big shout out to the community. You guys are so kind. Everyone sent me texts when they got a hold of it. And they were like, this just came up. It was like one in the morning and I was knocked out. And I woke up to all these messages and I was like frantically rushing to eBay. Um, and the hype so, definitely So helped. this is people spotting something that they knew you'd like that just got listed on eBay? And yep, literally people who were doing me the favor of being like, ah, Nora needs this. And then they send me the link and be yeah. like, you should get this or yeah. check it out. It's happening. And rather than snag it for themselves. Right. I mean, that's the community, right? I mean, that's the group we have. Fortunately, yeah. 99% of the people who are in our group are rock stars and so kindly look out for one another, um, especially when like someone's taste is that specific. Yeah. Um, so they told me, and it was the Marvel buyback, Silver Surfer, Joe Jusco signed eight out of 15. Mm. I've been after the sucker for a while. I am only now missing the red and the silver spectrum auto. I have four Ooh. plates, but I'm only missing those two cards for a full master rainbow. Okay. So you mean the red spectrum, which is one of one red spectrum, which are one of one yeah. and the Marvel silver spectrum auto, okay. which is out of 10. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, so the one thing yeah. that I thought was interesting about seeing the picture of that card, I hadn't appreciated that Joe had written X number out of 15. Yes. On the bottom. On the, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've seen that before. No, where the artist does the serial number, it's not well, stamped. I, I don't believe, I, I don't remember seeing it on any of those. That's the thing. So maybe I'm just not been looking. No, they're, they're there. They're there. Because okay. there's been other surfers that like came and gone because there was one surfer that was on there that was a buyback and funny enough it was the price that the guy had listed it as and he had a best offer option and uh, there was a bunch of drama there with that seller who i'm not a huge fan of but um that one had a number as well uh, uh okay. in fact that card <laughs> i was joking around with a friend because i had such a bad interaction with this ebay seller um i was like that card's dead to me that number of surfer out of 15 is dead <laughs> i don't want it get it away from me i'm out of it i don't even care if you exhibit it to me for free because I'm kind of hard-headed that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because at that point, you just, you know, I can't, I don't even want that. Yeah, life's stuff. too short. Life's too yeah, short. Yeah, it's going to be too much of a headache. Okay. So luckily, though. So then what happened? A great seller posted it on, so I bought it. Done deal. Solid. Yeah. Well, my boy Ian here let me know. He was, I just told him about it. It was the funniest thing. I just sent you the picture. I was like, look what I got. And we're like giggling, you know, geeking out. And then he's like, wait a minute. Is this one yours? Ian sends me a picture of the card posted by non-sport update magazine calling the sale of the week i think they said uh sale of the day sale of the week sale the day, sale the day. yeah sale of the day of yeah. the week promoting that the card had sold and basically using it as a plug to talk about the silver surfer movie that might be potentially finally coming our way in phase five oh. and it was really really cool to see oh. the card that i had just I've been searching for a long time and I commented on there and everything. Um, finally getting it. Hands famous. down. I, I'm, well, that is true. Well, that the card is, is. Well, I mean, I mean, what's the card without me? Right. I mean, come on. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Joe had nothing to do no, with it. No, not Joe. Evening, yeah. I Good love evening, Joe. Yeah. Love his artwork. He's fantastic. But I mean, yeah. You yeah, know, that's why I print all my all, on all my cards my face, like on the back in black and white. It's just is that, is full... that like a Norin buyback? Oh, absolutely. There's a stamp of you in yeah. You, people are like, it's, it's like the English stamps with a queen in profile. It's like that. I, I put a little crown on there and everything. I don't even yeah. care. Well, I did yeah. it right. That's why yeah. nobody wants my Silver Surfer stuff. Once I get it, they're like, he's ruined them. But now I made them better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Norin, <laughs> Norin's diva profile. <laughs> Uh, I talk so much garbage. Oh, um, no, that's quite all right. You're, you're, you're really cool, though. You're fun later in the day. We normally do this I'm early fun. in the morning, your time. Not that you're Because I'm just waking up morning. and I'm like just getting yeah, in it. Exactly, exactly. Oh, God, you, you, yeah. Your motor's clearly running today, sir. So yeah, it's, I'm it's ready. Enjoy to see. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> um, but it was really cool to have them post the card up there because that's always really, really fun. That is nice. Um, that was yeah. nice. That was a really cool surprise. That that made it all so worth it. Because at first I bought it. I bought it for the price. 
and I bought it in a rush because otherwise I'm never going to find the card. Um, and I was kind of like, maybe I should have asked him if he would do it cheaper because <laughs> I'm cheap. And then when they posted the thing, I was like, nah, yeah. this was perfect. Times like that when I've done that before and I've lost out. Yeah, because you'd lose out. You just, just miss because it. because you're trying to save a few quid. Someone else yeah. sees it, he's been after it, and they just buy it straight away. I'm sure I'm sure that's what happened to the other person who was thinking mm. about getting it. it was like, maybe mm. that's too high, and then it was gone. Yeah. It yeah. happens to me a lot. It happens to a lot of yeah. collectors. For yeah. certain pieces, you just can't. You got to bite the bullet. It sucks, but you got to bite the bullet. Yeah, you just got to do it. You just got to get yeah. it. I mean, if if you want it, you know. If you want it, if it's your thing. Um, if people are listing it just to put it in price jail, as I call it, then um, you might not want to do that. But this is in price jail. Wanted. What do you mean? Well, you know, we've talked before about listings on eBay where it's that it, they know that someone's after it, or it's the only one on there, and they've just wildly priced it really high. Oh yeah, no, and I it's don't just think he's sat pr- there for ages and ages. No, this one isn't. But we yeah. don't know that you know price jail. Yeah, I get it. Once it doesn't mean to say you'll pay as much as that as that. No, this was uh, kind of like the price that people had been asking for. Exactly. Um, so it's in, a fair in, market price. Yeah, and this is the trick, you know, with the Joe Jusco buyback autos from 2016. I know what people are thinking when they see those pieces. They're thinking, "Wow, here's the original set, signed by the man, serial numbered." Official release by Upper Deck, not a con signature. Mm, it's an mm. official pack release piece. I want the set. I want this as a nostalgia factor. Yeah, this will be mine forever. I know that's why the piece has been a nightmare to find because mm, people mm. see it and they're just so happy to have it, and rightfully yeah. so. It's a great piece. Yeah. So you know, I was kind of, I kind of knew that I was going to have to bite the bullet on this eventually, yeah. and if finally one came back up, and I was like, well, that's it. I can't hold off any longer. Yeah. But it's been two weeks of autos. First the Stan auto and now the Jusco auto. I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm about to start living out of a cardboard box. I was about I to say, you're, you're going to get ramen noodles for the rest of the year. I'm done. I'm like super solid. Like, yeah, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Just you guys want to go on a diet plan. This is the way to do it. Spend uh, money on your cards and not eat food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I am... Um, I um I've been nibbling away at single packs on EPAC, but apart from that, um I'm kind of wiped out from that Marvel Beginnings. So we can talk oh, yeah. about should we have an update? Where's Ian's Do Marvel we? Beginnings? Uh let's it has have to a look. Be there by now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you'd think. Um so let me have a look. So I got the dreaded uh message. So it had it had arrived in London, I believe, when we last spoke. Right in customs. Oh, it might have, no, it might have been in midair, or it might have landed in customs. Anyway, so I went online on Monday morning at eight forty-six in the morning. Your parcel has now been examined by HM Customs, and charges may have been raised by them. Please check Ugh. the tracking details below for further details. A letter will be sent to the recipient if charges are due. So, um, so oh, I, I, I got, I got, I got said letter. Um, charges due thirty-one pounds forty-four pence, which I have paid, and oh. um, they are due for delivery tomorrow. Um, hey! However, 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 I don't know. Um, I won't be in because I'll be here <laughs> still in Nottingham. Um, so oh, I'm really? Hoping, I'm hoping my wife will be home to accept the delivery. Otherwise, they send them back to the depot. Um, which is and then you have to wait for them to do it again, or you go pick it up. Yeah, well, you could go pick it up, um, which would be easy if we had if we owned a car. Because uh, oh, that's crazy right. though this might sound to Americans, we don't we don't need to own a car where where we live. Um, I and, wish. Um, however, <laughs> unless of course you need to go to the Parcel Force Depot, uh, which is on a trading estate, nowhere near public transport. So um, I wish we had better public transport over here. I know a lot of people would love to that. But yeah. there's such a stigma against it in America. It's really rough. That's weird. Because you know, obviously when I've been to America, I've been to fairly large metropolitan areas where there is public transport. Right. Um, so obviously New York, uh, Boston, well, Boston, you can pretty much walk around. Um, but um, in Vegas, you kind of <laughs> you risk your life just going across the strip, let alone anything else. <laughs> just uh, hang out in wheelbarrows and just oh, get going everywhere. Right. Um, so... Um, but you know, when I've travelled in America, I've kind of done the whole Greyhound bus thing, a little yeah. bit, which is quite it's nice. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Um, I've done the whole Billy Joel lyric, um, <laughs> where you where you um, 
taking a greyhound on the Hudson River line. I'm on oh, a New York State of Mind, and I've done that greyhound into New York that does that. That's pretty cool. And I sat right at the front on the upside that the driver wasn't on, so you had that no. view out the front window. And nice. I was like, yeah, I've ticked that one off the list. Thank you very much. That's pretty uh, cool. But um, Love it. Anyway, so yeah, so so it's it, they're almost here. They're almost here, um, which is which is cool. Yeah, it was kind of the amount of time I actually I probably expect about two weeks, but it just got stuck in LA for a week, so don't know what hmm. I was about. But that's know, a shame. It happens. It happens. It happens. Um, it happens. So yeah, they're here. I'm I'm I know they'll be fine because Ed package is bomb proof. Um, and the joyous thing is which I'm looking forward to almost as much as cracking the boxes, if not more, is Ed Webb does promo cards of his kind of, because his company is Sci-Fi Cards. So I don't know oh. if you've seen this, but he does promo cards, and it's kind of a little alien. But no. different artists who you'll have heard of do each card. And he comes That's out amazing. with several each year, and they're available at shows that he goes to. And he also puts them in each order. But they're actual. They're actually collectible. If I, wow. could, if I, and he's he's been he's been at it for quite a while. So they're actually, um, where, where, probably fifty or sixty of them. Um, Sci-fi cards promo. I'm just typing it into eBay. You can buy. You know, people sell them on eBay because <laughs> they're pretty um, nice little things. Uh, pretty desirable little things. So once I get past all the sponsors, I'm going to check it out um sci-fi cards promo from 2012 um p16 from the philly show it's on ebay um and it's on ebay for just over five dollars so you know nice nice little card but you know i've got a few of those from when i've ordered from him in the past um but it's just a fun little thing um hmm. and who who's the artist on that let's have a look limited edition of 1000 um Oh, wow. Card art by Bien Flores, that one. And it's from the 2012 Philly show. Um, wow, cool. And there's, there's a couple of that, that particular one on there. Um, last time I looked, there were a lot more. There, there probably are a lot more. I'm just not going to weed them all out now. But um, but yeah, I think it's a f really fun little thing. So that's that's another yeah. little fun collectible. Um, I if love it. Your, if you're into your cards. I, I like that sort of thing. Well, those little kind of just little nice little yeah they don't cost you that much they're just fun to chase after just to get some, and they're great they're great works nice. too yeah exactly exactly so. and really nice made cards too nice glossy look i mean they look good yeah so i've got a few of those in hand actually uh from oh I've wow nice them four so i'll um i'll pop some pictures of them on the, on the tasting notes because i'm more than happy to give ed a plug as um an old school kind of dealer um ed rocks. in that in that regard um what else has been happening? What else has been happening? That's kind of it for the moment. I think this 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 week, apart from you know, I've been nibbling away at Marvel Weekly still. That's going. Yeah, Marvel Weekly. How insane are those Daredevils? They look good, man. They do look good. So, we're have you pulled the negative yet? Yeah, this week oh, I pulled two in six packs. What? Yeah, you have the best in luck with that packs. set. Well, you, yeah. I mean, it's happened twice where I have pulled two in one week, but the odds the odds of that are pretty steep i would think given, so yeah given that given the only, odds there's 50 of them spread across um 1996 packs over every four week rotation and you're going full set right uh yes yes wow. so i've got i've got one of each negative um i've also got um spare negative locked away just in case i don't pull one in one cycle i've got one to trade um and yeah i think we're probably about three or four cycles to go so after Daredevil, um, there'll be one, two, three, yeah, at least three more full cycles of cards. Wow. And then we're kind of done. Um, and at the end of it, of course, you get the, if you've, the negatives don't count towards this, but I think the base cards do and the yeah, base card achievements yeah. do. I'm not sure about the CC cards. I think there's an achievement for the CC cards. But anyway, at the end there of is. it, you can redeem the achievements for a sketch wow that's why people are going nuts over it because sketches yeah, are, gonna, are yeah. serious currency on epacs yeah uh, i would think so time. i'm seeing it all the time on the on the forum people posting and going oh got any sketches for trade you know marvel sketches want this want that you know wow 
Um, and I remember the one time I pulled some sketches was Marvel Masterpieces. Mm. And I pulled two. Um, and within 10 minutes, I had multiple trade offers. What? With like a lot of cards in return. Wow. It was crazy. It was like, it was like, it was like flies around. <laughs> it was like bees around honey. There you go. Um, so yeah, yeah. There we go. It is late. It's almost half past eleven at night. So. Oh no! I'm so sorry. So, oh no! Rocky's finished. Okay. <laughs> I'll never know what happened. It's finished. No, that's not true. I have seen it before. You Adrian. <laughs> Adrian. To be fair, I'm in a hotel room. The people next door are probably calling down to reception and going, the "Guy in the next room is making loads of noise." <laughs> oh oh dear. Um so yeah, Marvel Weekly. Um what else has been happening on EPAC? So yeah, I, I bought some did some single packs. So we mm-hmm. were gonna t- this is what we were gonna talk about last time. Communist pervs. Ah, there we go. Red flashes. There we go. Red flashes. Red flashes. <laughs> Red flashes. We were gonna do this is kind of a bonus episode, but hey, I think it's long enough to be a regular episode now. Um, I think so. so red flashes are the term. So if you for those uninitiated. If you buy a single, well, if you buy any product on on EPACs, whether it's a you know, single pack or box or multiple packs, whatever it is, when you open a pack, the cards kind of reveal as you press open, and when it's a hit, uh, it flashes red around the card in a kind mm-hmm. of a nice pulsating very gentle, very hypnotic, kind of soothing, like you're getting a back rub from a Thai lady um, kind of way. Um, and it's, it's, quite, it's, kind, it's kind of quite sexual in a way when it, when it flashes. I I'm think. sure it is, Ian. Um, I, I hope other people are feeling the same way. Otherwise, well, this would be really I know, weird. I know one person who does is, is, is in Mr. Mr. Stephen Bagley at Bag of Fleas. Yeah, Bagley, Please. that's true. I'm sure with all the flashes he gets. So so, so one of the... One of the <laughs> I need to back up and explain that. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> um, so when you buy a single pack, so you just go on there and you buy one pack, now, the odds of you getting a red flasher in a single pack, given that a lot of hits are one per box, so it's supposed to be one every 12 packs or one every 10 packs or however many packs are in a box of cards. If you buy a single pack, the odds of you getting a red flasher are quite slim. It's kind of a bit of a game now for people on the group to go on there and buy a single pack and see if they pull a red flasher, hmm. if they get a hit. Um, now, for the longest time, I was the guy who got the pack that was left after the pack in the box had gone with a red flasher in it. So I just got, you know, regular base cards or whatever. Um, and Stephen had, I think, before Fleer Ultra X-Men, and by the way, Fleer Ultra X-Men, RIP, mm-hmm. has sold out on packs after the longest time, finally sold yeah. out. Um, Stephen would go on and he would buy a single pack of Fleer Ultra X-Men for, what, $15? I think so. For thirteen ninety nine or something like that. Uh, no, thirteen ninety nine is Fleer Ultra Spider Man with five cards. It was fourteen ninety nine. Damn uh, six cards. Yeah, good job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> scary how I know this. It's impressive. Yeah, I that's know. good stuff. I know. And um, he would he would then go on and open it and video it on his screen recording, mm. and lo and behold, he'd get something. So he'd get a sketch, or he'd get a comic card. Or we'd get a red X cut, or we'd get a, He's a, mad a Xavier variant parallel, and it was kind of getting to the point. Where it's like, <laughs> stop it! It's really annoying. How dare you, sir? <laughs> you need but, to back yeah. off, man. <laughs> but, but actually, hats off to you. Um, but yeah, the, the odds, the odds are pretty astronomical. So I kind yeah. of started referring to it as bag luck. Bag, that's true. He was so, pulling no, crazy luck, you know, stuff. You get bag luck, you know. You've, you've pulled it. So, uh-huh. um, and I, I've, I've had it happen on a few occasions. And I had it happen twice last weekend. Well, I, you get um, good luck too, though. I mean, in all yeah. seriousness. No, yeah, yeah. I, do, I do. I mean, listen, it, it's, it's an odds game. It's a numbers yeah, game. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, it, it happens all the time. But um, but I, I I don't know if it is genuinely random or if, if Upper Deck have an algorithm that spots that certain people haven't bought in a while. So on their first pack back, it treats them. Or hmm. I, I, I'm not sure if there's something in there that does that to, to kind of get I have back no into idea. the buying habit. Yeah. It's so well designed in terms of the gamification of, of keeping you going. And it very much follows the patterns of, you know, fruit machines in terms of rewarding people yeah. playing it. You know, it's very much on those, on that way, 
a fascinating book about all that and it's, it's quite quite interesting the hmm. science of it and how it works and the dopamine hit when you get a hit like a red flasher and you kind of you know you want to go back and buy some more and the whole site yeah. is designed as soon as you've opened your pack it's like open 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 that button disappears and the next one is buy more because you open all yeah. the time so you know, it very much leads you to spend more money and, and do that and, and and designed very well but um so i bought um so i tried a couple of single flu ultra spider-man packs this weekend just gone and the first one i got a um x century so the x century cards mm-hmm. um they have parallels so x century the base card is um oh, i can't remember what it is now but the the parallels are then and the and then the other parallel is and now and that, that sounds bizarre but it's basically it's supposed mm. to be the character at three different points ah. in the uh, i think that's the idea behind it anyway so like it. it's um so the spider-man one is uh sorry the black cat one um i've got the black cat basic century and then i've got the middle tier which i think is purple in color um, i think and so that's that's limited to 31 so it's actually quite a tough pull and that's the and then one so i've I've already got that i physically bought that off ebay before i even knew what epax was so probably a couple of years that, ago when flea watcher spider-man came out wow um and then the and now one is purple did i say purple yeah you already so said, yeah. yeah so yeah so the middle one is red and then this one the purple one i think there's only eight or ten of them Wow, uh, and I don't have that one, so I pulled it, and I thought, "Oh, it's the one I want." But then I realised it's the one that I don't have, the one that I already do have, rather physically in hand. So limited to thirty-one. So I thought, "Well, it's not too bad, not too bad." So I started sniffing around on Epax just to get a sense. And of course, none have sold on eBay for the longest right. time because it's you know, quite <laughs> a tough hit. So nothing there. There's none on Comsi, and it turns out I've got the only one on Epax. What? Unlocked. So when you go into EPAC, you've got a trading market marketplace and a good gauge of how many cards are out there and therefore how sought after it might be is how many there are in the trading market marketplace. Yeah. On and I had the only one. So I thought, well, that's quite tasty, that. Um, yeah, and amazing. so I put a little post up on the um, EPAC forum just saying I'd pulled this and um, had someone come along and was like, oh, yeah, okay. I quite like that. And then I point out to them in the notes, it's the, actually the only one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm remembering this wrong. Sorry, sorry, rewind. <laughs> I got proactive with it. I thought, sod it, I'm not going to wait around <laughs> and, and let someone come to me. I actually started sending out tra- trade offers to people. Ah, nice. Who had coin and auto cards. Ah. Of which, of, yeah, which are the ones that I wanted from Fear to Spider-Man. And I thought, it's a bit cheeky, me doing this. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, but... in my head, I didn't think they were the same level. But most of the coin and autos had two or three on EPAX, but there was only one of this. So actually, once I figured that out, I realized actually it's not, it's pretty even trade if you yeah. want the card that I pulled. Um, and it turns out someone did. So I got a really nice Sal, Sal Bushema, um signed coin. So that's the one I saw. Got it. Yeah. So that's that one. And then the following day, I did another single pack and I pulled a printing plate. But I can't call that a red flasher because it didn't flash red. So sometimes when you, well, there's two things at play here. Sometimes when you open cards and Epax has a bit of a funny moment, a funny turn, or if it's really busy on the site, you'll get a hit, but it won't flash red. Right. In this case, apparently, even though printing plates are one of one items, and there's only four of them for every card that exists for, for some reason, the programming of Epax is such that it doesn't flash red on a printing plate on Fleer Ultra Spider-Man. Interesting. Which seems really weird. Yeah, it does seem really weird. Because it is a really rare hit. Yeah, it is really. Well, I mean, yeah. 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 So so I've still got that one up your sleeve. Um, wow. Uh, looking for wish list, folks, especially on the comic cuts or or coin and auto cards at Spectrum. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm waiting. Yeah, see, I want to. I just keep thinking about buying packs, but I'm like, no. yeah, no, don't do it. Do, do it on a set where you, <laughs> no, do it yeah, on a set where okay. you know there's something you want to trade for. Right. That's what I'm going to wait for. So if you hadn't already bought the flare cards that you've already acquired. Yeah, which I, yeah. And because um, on because flare 
obviously Surf is currently a banned character, but the Flare 2019 release had buybacks from when Surfer wasn't a banned character. And so you went and sort those out, didn't you? Yeah, I already got them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but say if you hadn't, and you'd wait yeah, for it to that would be the way to do it. Because then you have trade fault, uh, tra- mm. trade material, and that's the way to go. Exactly. So, um, but there will be a set soon. I guarantee mm-hmm. where you'll be dabbling. I'm sure. Well, I mean, Flare's coming out soon. I'm sure for EPAC. Now yeah. that Premiere is out. Yeah, Premiere's I'm out sure. physically. Physically, um, not necessarily uh, on EPAC. Yeah. yeah. So I think next you'll have Flare hit EPAC, and then you'll have Premiere hit EPAC. Mm-hmm. Um, in yeah, the meantime, the it's all gone a bit quiet on the Marvel 80th set that we know is coming, but we shouldn't know is coming. Right, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, so I don't think that'll be this year because it wasn't on any solicitations I've seen. Really? Um, yeah, I don't wow. think it's not being officially announced yet. That's the thing. Interesting. I wonder why. So we know it's happening. <laughs> Even though we shouldn't know it's happening, it's um, time, yeah. but um, but we do know it's happening. But no, on the um, on the um, lineup because Ed Ed's um, Ed sends out monthly newsletters, so it's actually a pretty good um, newsletter to sign up for. Um, Ed sends out Ed of Sci-Fi Card sends out a monthly yeah, yeah. newsletter, and it's pretty good because he says, um, "All right, so I've got September's newsletter from." sci-fi cards so basically um there is a marvel set coming out it's marvel agents of shield seasons one to five. Oh wow so there are there is stuff coming out but it's not original art side of marvel it's more kind of right. mcu um and it's agents of shield compendium it's actually called and it's mm. out on november 20th from upper deck that's pretty exciting uh, but that is i believe the only marvel release Actually, no. I'm talking. I'm talking out my bottom. Um, I, I, I almost missed it. The Punisher season one upper deck it says. Just, wow, I can't believe they're full. doing that. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it just says full. Well, I can only imagine they've had it in production, or they've already got the auto cards, uh, and they were like, "Yeah," because you know what I said about they often just get the um, autos mm-hmm. at the time. Um, I mean, there is a set coming up in the autumn from upper deck that's not Marvel that I'm quite excited about. It's chasing Amy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because they did a Clark set last year or the year before, and oh, you know, wow. as, as we've discussed, I'm you know I'm I'm quite a big Kevin Smith fan. I've yeah, never got awesome. into the Clark set, but it's it's still on Epax, and people trade it madly. Um, wow, really yeah, that's right. People are kind of big fans yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But chasing Amy, I'd love because you know you could get Affleck signing. Yeah, that's going to be pretty intense. I wonder yeah. if they'll pull that off. That would be pretty amazing. Well, he signed they for the. Um, they've just announced a DC, um, DC movie set. Really? Yeah, and Affleck signed for that. Okay, so it's it's and so has Gal Gadot, a... and so has um, Ezra Miller, and so has um, guy who plays Aquaman, Jason Momoa. So you know all the all the lead and Henry Cavill signed Superman. So oh, so people so are like on it. Yeah, so that sets a precedent for um, Affleck signing. I mean, Affleck, I think Affleck signed cards before, to be fair. I'm sure he has. I mean, Absolutely I just don't know off the top of my head. I'm sure, De- I'm sure Daredevil the movie. Had a yeah, card. he had to. I feel like I've seen those, yeah. unless I'm making it up. I but I feel know. like I've seen those. I loved that film. You know what? I liked it. People talk major trash about it. Yeah. But it wasn't like... I really enjoyed it. It wasn't terrible. I mean, it was like, bullseye. I kind of Bullseye, uh, Colin Farrell really pulling off Bullseye in my uh, Colin, Colin Farrell is great though. There's um, a great movie called In Bruges that Colin oh, Farrell. Yes, in. yes, yes. Have we spoken That's, about this? I think we've had to spoken in about Bruges. this. In, in Bruges. Bruges. So, so folks, if you want a film that will make you laugh so much, you will possibly wet yourself or smoke <laughs> whatever you're drinking. In Bruges is the one. Yeah, it is, and it pulls on your heartstrings too. And it's it, a, it's a it very does. compelling film. It does. It's also yeah. filthy. If yeah, you're in any I mean, way of a sensitive disposition, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> as in for swear words, because it has my magic Swiss Army knife C word in it multiple <laughs> times. Ray Fines plays the most incredible character. Ah, uh, Ray Fines. Um, <laughs> there's so much I want to say, but I can't. It's a great movie. No, it's a movie you but should watch quotes. cold. There's like quotes. you don't. You, yeah, don't look quotes. up that movie. Yeah, watch it. And and just and just absorb yeah. that movie. It's one of it's, these films like like Napoleon Dynamite and um, mm-hmm. like With Nail and I, 
where once you've seen it, you, mm. you will quote it. Yeah, for 100%. Um, the only thing is, when you quote this one, chances are you might get fired. Yeah, I'd be a little bit careful so, about quoting it, yeah. to be um, honest. But it is an absolutely spectacular film. But anyway, Daredevil. Yeah. Um, Daredevil, yeah, I liked it. I you, know, it. you know what was really good about Daredevil? The director's cut. And maybe yes. people disagree. But I thought director's cut was actually be- it was yes. better than the film. Yes. And I thought, I don't know, I was, I don't know, I liked it. And I liked Electra in it. Uh, yep. Jennifer, Jennifer Garner. Garner. And um, I dig it. I thought it was one of the better older ones. You know what I mean? Like yeah. with Blade and stuff like that. Yeah. I thought it. I thought it kind oh, of like Blade. Around Blade that. too, of course, is Guillermo del Toro. Is Blade one Guillermo del Toro? No, it's not. But Blade two is. And it is oh, Blade a, two. It is That's a, right. Yeah. And Ron Perlman's in it, and it's just, oh, it's just and Ryan, astonishing. Ryan Reynolds is in the third one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a quote from the third one that I can't say on air either, but it's oh, one of my yeah. favorite movie quotes of all. Jessica time. Bell's in that too. I like Jessica Bell. Uh, Jessica. Oh, Jessica Biel. Biel. Um, I say Biel. Um, sorry. Biel. Justin. Justin Trouser Snake's wife. Um, Justin Trouser Snake's wife. <laughs> is that how you go about that? Okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of a nickname for him in this country. I thought that was in your country as well. But yeah, that's hilarious. No. Yeah. I missed yeah. that. I don't that's know why. Fantastic. I've no idea why. But anyway, um, but yeah, Daredevil, and of course, Michael Clark Duncan. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's soul. Kingpin who um, killed it. He was yeah, and he's oh, such a shame he passed away. Um, yeah, yeah he's mile. such a good actor. Oh, yeah, Green Mile really has me in pieces. Green Mile is really good. Yeah, really whenever good. I watch he it, killed, I just, just I'm just killed that sobbing. role. Just did such a good job. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, yeah, Michael Clark Duncan, um, Kevin. I like Smith that set. In it to bring it. You know what? Bring it back to full oh, circle. Oh yes, Kevin Smith is in it as the pathology guy, and so his Jerry Pant Pant Pantaloni, I think his name is, or Pantaloni. I think, I, I think, think you're right. Matrix. Yeah, um, wow. As, as Cypher, the guy sold them out. So, you know, it's all that whole connection of actors that you see in all these different movies. And, um, yeah. Yep. Anyway, I think... Dever- Daredevil movie. There's a card set. It's on Jeff uh, Jeff's list. I need to own that. I need to own ah, that. There's a whole, this whole thing per box of collection. Uh, 36 packs of seven cards. Um, you had a behind-the-scenes section doesn't uh, have checklist. a checklist let's start there okay so let's see binders i don't see binder on here I'm i see promo cards oh uh dealer sell sheets and i see three promo cards electro versus daredevil close up and standing on the roof oh. which is that song or whatever the case may be yeah. there's a special autograph 50 made special tops dealer contest and it's jennifer gardner as electra oh and then there is an authentic movie memorabilia, which is one out of 72 packs, and that's Daredevil's costume. Oh. Now, this is the crazy part. We got five autographs, one out of 72 packs. That means technically... One every three bo- Every two or two three packs? Boxes. Two, yeah, boxes, two boxes, right, because yeah, there's yeah. 36 packs. Yeah. That's it, right. And you have Ben Affleck, which is the rarest, one out of 2,156 packs. Oh, I'm not even going to do the math on that. That's that's about ten cases at least, at least yeah, maybe more. At yeah, least right. more. Mm. Coolio, which I forgot, Coolio was in this. <gasps> one, yeah. yeah. And then you have Mark Steven Johnson, writer director, which yeah. is one out of one ninety two packs. Coolio is a solid one out of three hundred seventy seven packs. Okay. So that's actually kind of a tough pull. That director also did Ghost Rider, by the way. Ghost Rider. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Joe Pantiliano, who yes. we talked about, yes. as Ben Urch, is one out of 2,800. Oh, and, oh, and that's right. Pounds. He plays Ben Urich. Ben Urich, the, that's it. He's the reporter character who's in Spider-Man and Daredevil. Right, and then you have the, act- the Marvel Comics universe. Right, 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 right. And then you have the young Matt Murdock, uh, which is a name, uh, Scott Terra. Hmm. Okay. So those are the five. And then Jennifer Gardner's in there, but only 50 were made. That's kind of right. You know what? Let's and see no if she's Michael on eBay. Clark Duncan. No, no Michael Clark, Clark Duncan. Duncan. No, there's a checklist for the set. It's oh. one out of 72. Um, 2003. Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, pretty crazy. I forgot. Solid, I knew I'd seen that card, solid, but. Yeah. Um, I might have to track that one down just for, just for fun, even though it's not a. Um, 
Actually, no, do I? I've got... <laughs> I'm no, kind of changing my mind. I? Well, that's the thing is I'm, I'm happy. I'm kind of comforted knowing that it exists in the world. But I'm right, not sure I need to own it because it's, it's um, I think it's my OCD because, you know, I'm, I'm into my original art, <laughs> Marvel. Primarily. I get that. And I think if I was to stray out of that, which is why the Avengers Assemble set I've got kind of it sticks out like a sore thumb for me uh, a mm -hmm. little bit because it just doesn't doesn't one of these things is not like the other <laughs> one of these nice. things is not like the other i yeah. love it yeah so Whoa. you're looking for the jennifer garner how much come on hit me okay yeah sorry i hope i wasn't too distracted all right no, so this is right. crazy so it's not the jennifer garner it's the ben affleck i found oh okay 543 dollars on a on a bid on so, a oh, yeah, buy it now. Buy now. Five and yeah, I to be fair, I would expect I was expecting high on a buy now. Me too, but I don't yeah. think it's as popular. No. Um, so I think that's maybe why it's settled at that price range, but it's there. Coolio's there. Happen. They have the uh they have season one and season two, which has just amazing actors in it. So oh, that's the TV pretty yeah, yeah. yeah, the TV series, which is pretty, pretty well packed on here. Um, I'm trying to find Electra, funny enough. I don't know if it's here. No, well, it's, that's quite a tough pull. That would be a so tough if it pull. went to dealers. Who knows how many are actually out there? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I see two Ben Athlecks around the same price, and that seems to be. Yeah, no Electra, mm, and they have okay. a buyback Daredevil. Juice. Oh my gosh, a Joe Jusco signed buyback six out of fifteen mm. for two hundred dollars or best offer. Mm, that's good. It's very good. It's all right. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I need to, um, one day I'll, I'll try, I'll resume my hunt for a black cat one. Um, oh, I have seen them on there. That up yet? No, I have seen them on there in the past. When I say in the past, I'm talking like a couple of years back now. Um, yeah. No kidding. They, someone they reminded me of that 200 there. Someone reminded me about, uh, what prices were like. They sent me a bunch of prices of what things were like in 2016 for that set. <laughs> God, that's depressing. Oh, that mate. broke me to be oh. honest. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll live, dear. I'm sure you'll That's live. Fair. That's yeah. fair. You just sit there, stroke your um, your silver surfer autos. I'm just uh, crying to my cards. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that, dear, because that will, that will ruin That's it. right. No, there um, you go. Now, whose artist <laughs> intro have we got on this episode? I have no idea because we... <laughs> <laughs> we, we might have we, to edit no, this out no, and <laughs> no no we do we do we do have one who sent oh, one good. in the other day who sent one in the other day it was oh my gosh. yes oh, right now this is this is the name i've been practicing you got this achilles kokinakis wow i am so impressed by you because if you were going to ask me to do it it was not going to happen yeah i'm so, so proud of you bro <laughs> now that this is interesting because uh, i think it's a, a, a possibly a cultural thing uh, some countries do this where the surname is written before the, f the first name right right and right, so right. so everyone knows him as cock Co oh no achilles kokonakis kokonakis achilles is how it's written in a lot of places yeah, but in the intro that you'd all have heard about, right by after, now, um, you will have heard how he pronounces it in his glorious, glorious Greek accent. So glorious Greek accent. Um, okay. So yeah, um, solid dude, stunning artwork. I mean, one does. of the best artists. Like in all seriousness, like yeah. top tier, pull this card. You are a happy yeah. camper. It's yeah. that kind of that kind of artwork and his yeah. gold borders, his it's designs, really nice. yeah. his like shadow boxy kind of effect he puts on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super yeah. impressive, and the concepts are always so much fun, especially yes. like the ones he did with the Spider-Man villains yes. and that kind of stained glass comic book paneling yes. kind of mix. I'm sure, I'm sure it's just comic book paneling, but it has yeah. those beautiful cuts in it, and um, I mean, just a great 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 artist all around and really brings a different dimension to sketch cards it's truly does. amazing it does i mean he's he he described it when i when i was um going backwards and forwards on pm he described it as um a, a series of portrait series that he'd, ah. he'd done um so there's and that's the ca a card i own it's from one of the written house sets i think it's the women of marvel 2 or dangerous divas 2 and oh. um so the, he's done the outside of it as if it's a kind of a gilt frame, I guess. And then he's got um, 
the most beautiful black cat in the middle of it, but kind of done as if she's posing for a painting. Wow, very cool. It's, yeah, it's really nicely done. But I, I hadn't kind of given it the credit uh, that I maybe should have in that he, he'd chosen to do a series of portraits. Oh, wow. As his sketch cards for that set. So, um, which are which are brilliant but he does these really interesting as, as you mentioned comic panel kind of things but we've not just sort of square they're kind of dynamic in the way they, they fit very together. dynamic like the yeah, use of really depth nice. in his they're work really is nice. is quite interesting like yeah. you know you get you know it's always interesting that what i see sketch card artists do when they deal with yeah. inside the box because sometimes you have different types of like marvel premiere you have those cuts on the corner so it yeah. makes this kind of like off centered oval yeah. Uh, type of effect and yeah. i'm always fascinated by what different artists do to play with that space yeah and he's his pieces never cease to amaze me they're yeah. constantly inventive and super creative yeah. yeah yeah they are so um so i'm when we talked about axbone the other week we talked about yeah that axbone had gone off and uh good evening ax uh axbone Happy birthday for last week or the week before. Yes. Happy belated birthday, um, my friend. Yeah, because I completely I saw it come off my feet and then I completely missed it because I was on solo charge. I do it then. all it the slipped, time like that. It my mind. Um, so um, in, in the same vein as Axe Bone went off and did some um, kind of creator-owned, I guess, best way to phrase yeah, it, um, set, cool um, in his style kind of pin-up art. Um, uh, Achilles has, has done some uh, similar thing under the banner of iconic creations mm-hmm. um and the set is iconic literature so it, it literally is people from iconic uh, literature it's, it's kind of <laughs> difficult to find any other way to say uh, my, my wi-fi connection is just ground to a halt so i was going to bring up more examples of, of which characters are in there but they are literally from literature like pandora and then yeah and you know there's sleepy hollow i think yeah he did, there's, or there's there's some Emily, but, yeah but it's not just him it's other really really top end artists including yeah of, yeah of other um uh greek artists i like that set Pandora. a lot they're really good people yeah. in there well he's about to drop set two so oh, now really? is a good time. Yeah, now is a good time. So he's he was delayed in doing the intro for us because he's been knee deep in prep for that, and I think he's just Beast. finding it. Um, it it's, it's one of these things you're learning as you go because it's yeah, it's a it's a learning curve um, putting out one of these sets. It's quite quite a lot of work. I'm sure. So yeah, I mean, it always seems like pretty amazing work they're able to put together. Yeah. It does. It does. So there's there's a couple of links, and I'm going to put these on the tasting notes <laughs> because I don't expect you to necessarily um, uh, be able to type this in. So th- his main one is um, uh, Kokonakis Achilles art. Um, so that's his kind of personal page for his his art. But then he's got the one for um, this is a lot easier, which is at Iconic Creations Limited. So it's Facebook.com. You know, Iconic Creations. Very cool. Um, but there's a, there's also a group which is something similar to what Axbone has done for his, where it's a group that you can pull, uh, that you can post your pulls, and your oh, case awesome. breaks and your APs and things like that, um, and it's called iconic and the group is iconic creations pulls case breaks and APs and it's a public group open to anyone, um, and I'm straight away I'm looking at someone who's posted an Alice in Wonderland AP by our way. Oh my God, I've Dorothy, seen that one. Dorothy AP. Uh, the Three Musketeers, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Leon uh, Braeldress. These, oh, yeah. these, are, these are nice, nice artists. So, I mean, this is kind of... Axbone has got these artists working together on a set and contributing. So, um, this is kind of like the underground sketch card scene. Yes. Like, you've been in the game for a while. Yeah. You've seen artists. You're starting to become fans yes. of the artists, particularly rather than just characters, and you just want to see what they can do for different characters yeah. because you're a fan of the art. Yeah. Then you start stumbling into like eBay sales, and you're like, "Oh, what's this Perna Studios, yes. or what's this yeah. iconic literature, or what's this Axbone?" Yeah. And or it's Island just, or, you know, I'm, I bought cards yeah. just because I can't help it. Like they're that good, and especially yeah. his work. Yeah. You know, if you. Yeah, Marvel property is amazing, and it's really cool to see our characters and our hobby kind of being drawn by such amazing artists. But yes, you know the the work they do yes. really transcends, and it really suits different many different IPs and properties, yes. and yeah, just such a cool thing to get into. And a lot a lot of these artists, you know, they obviously have the Marvel sets as their kind of a gateway to a wider audience. 
Yeah. And then if you see someone you like, look at what they're doing in other in other areas. You know, track down what they're doing in other sets. Maybe they'll be a part of one of these sets that's been put out. You know, like um, like Axe Bone sets, like um, Icon Iconic Creations, like um, mm -hmm. Tony and Lane Perna's um, sets, yeah. Myths and Legends, um, Island Dreams, which has been going for years. Um, you have the Halloween set, which I think yeah, is really cool. Yeah, exactly. There's loads of these sets that you can kind of really get into. So, you know, I've talked before about, um, you know, the artists that I've kind of came to know on Marvel sets who are no longer active on Marvel sets or not as much, but are still yeah. doing wonderful work on, on these sets. And I think I think they get maybe a little bit more freedom outside of the licensing restrictions of working on a, on a, on a licensed product like Marvel. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking here at two APs by Gary Kazale, oh. uh, Kizil, of of Frankenstein and Sherlock Holmes, and the Sherlock Holmes is, is just astonishing. It's really good. They're crazy gorgeous. Yeah. It's, it, they're nice cards. They're really and nice people cards. hold on to those cards. Those cards are yeah, not they, easy to find. Yeah, they do. Like, well, they're really not. Well, it's like me. You know, I'm a black hole collector of Elfie Lebelow's, um dungeon. Yeah, um, yeah. You, cards, that's just um, all yours. And Scott Barnett's um, treasures uh -huh. booties, including the original art for one of the sets. I saw um, that. That was a really cool collection. Yeah, actually. and they're, they're not get, they, you know, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, yeah, but people they, hold on to this kind of yeah. stuff. Those those are the special ones. Those yeah. people know you know i bought i actually bought one it was of it was goat man and it was mythology i know, I know. and that was by pj who oh. i'm just i love pj so much and i saw that card on ebay and it was pretty pricey and i was kind of looking at it, i was like man i don't know if i want this to disappear into the void <laughs> and uh, i eventually you know i eventually you know made the call and the lighting on that it's just so creepy. It's just goat man. And you know, that's like an urban legend mythology kind of thing. And uh, I think it's uh, more Hispanic kind of culture type of thing, like okay. goat man or whatever they may yeah. be. Maybe it's European as well. I'm not sure. Yeah. I know it transcends a little bit, but it was just so creepy, so cool. And just totally spoke to me. And I was like, all right, I'm going to have yeah, to get yeah, this. Yeah. But yeah. that it's, it's a gateway drug for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's pretty amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, the um when you sent me the picture of that i literally was like oh <laughs> yeah no it's creepy it no, came said, out of the blue yeah because no like, one knows i collect what? this other weird stuff it know. was funny i said it to him he was like okay what about it <laughs> i was like i got it he was like it's a really cool car i was like i know he's like i can't believe you're into that i was like i don't know what happened and i love yeah. all the halloween stuff and you know i want to get like more creepy ones but again my tastes are really picky so yeah. unless it like immediately calls to me you know, I, I admire it and love it and cherish the image that I save into a folder and look at it every once in a while. But yeah, yeah. Unless I have to have it, and that one I just had to have. Well, the um the one that I would I haven't I'm sure it exists. I've just not looked at it, but it just came came into my mind as you were talking about uh, Goatman, is Mothman. Yes, they have Mothman. It's mm. really cool. Yeah, really cool. And that is um, really. I mean, have you seen that movie with Richard Gere? Yes. Yeah, Mothman. yeah, 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 yeah. Deep it's pretty creepy. Sadly. Yeah, deep yeah, yeah, sadly. yeah. Uh, Laura yeah. Linney, I think, is in it as well. Um, One of my favorite horror movies. It's not a horror monster, but yeah, people people reference it every once in a while. But um, it's um, Jacob's Ladder. Oh, uh, that Tim for Robbins? me is yeah, yeah. That for me is a good piece. Like that's yeah. a, one of the best psychological horrors, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Very solid peach. Oh, Richcraft is another one. That's by Tony's and uh, his wife, um, Elena. Right? Yes. Yeah, Elaine. It's she, Tony and Elaine. Yeah, Elaine. Elaine, by the way, is a killer collector. Like we she. About this. Yeah, we have. Sorry. We yeah, we have this. Yeah, great yeah, yeah. stuff. And we gave great, them a great, shout great out, stuff. and they were like, "Oh, mm -hmm. thank you." Um, yeah, they rock. I'm, I'm hoping um, they'll 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 come on at some point. Um, um, I'm sure I, they will. One. Yeah, yeah, I've I've, I've, I've been chatting to them. Yeah, I've been chatting. Oh, really? To them awesome. They're just, they're just they're just busy, busy, busy. Oh, they're know, great. Stuff. Um, they'll be here soon. Enough. Enough. But you know, there's only one goat, um, as far as I'm concerned, um, and that's you, dear. <laughs> You are, you. you are the greatest of all time. So um, <laughs> anyway, so go check out um, Achilles um, Kokonikis uh, and his gorgeous work. Thank you, sir. Please. Um, yeah. We'll pop it on the tasting notes. Um, and yeah, I think that about wraps us up I for this so. episode. Um, so I'm going to go and pass out now because I'm really tired. Oh. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, it is now midnight in the UK. Oh, you got to um, sleep, man. Rocky is uh, long since finished. Yeah, I'm going to have a quick shower. I'm one of these weird people. I like to have a shower before I go to bed. I just like to go to bed clean. I mix it up. 
Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I'm too lazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, I tend not to because because my um my four year old tends to stumble into the bathroom and go, Daddy, I want my breakfast or or she brings oh. the cat in or something like that. Um yeah. when I'm when I'm that uh, would be so, distracting. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I tend not to do morning showers because because the last time that happened the cat got deposited into the shower and she wasn't best pleased. Um <laughs> I'll leave you with that image. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. Not my dreams. That's Thank you so much. Right. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening, folks. Um, it was a bit, bit of a rambly one this episode, but I hope you enjoy it. Um, as ever, um, send us some feedback. Leave us a voicemail um, at the MCC pod on Facebook and Twitter. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear. Um, the challenge is still down for character collectors. Come and tell us what you're, what you're all about. Mm-hmm. What got you started? What's your origin story? Um, and I'm just going to put a pin in it now because I've wanted to talk about promo cards for a long time. I also want to talk about sell sheets. Yes. Because we mentioned that. could be that. the next episode. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. We mentioned that. Um, I've got my eye on one on eBay. I'm going to pull the trigger on, which I think is a pretty reasonable price. Um, and awesome. um, uh, it, gives me, it gives me a week or so to do some research. And we will talk about them next on next the time. Marvel Card Collectors Podcast. Oh, certificate 18. Go alone. <laughs> Enjoy collecting. And we're out. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Marvel Card Collectors podcast. You can subscribe via our home on anchor.fm forward slash MCCP. Leave us a message via that link with questions, comments, or just to say hi, and we may even play on the show. We're also on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms. Our podcast is at The MCC Pod on Facebook and Twitter. And you can find links on our Facebook page to the two groups MCCW, Marvel Card Collectors Worldwide, and MMC, Marvel Masterpieces Collectors. On Instagram, find us at MM Collectors and at Sketch Card Hive. The great music we use is called Rocket Power by Kevin McLeod. Thanks to the collectors, artists, and creators who support the Marvel Cards Fan Collective. We'll see you next time, and remember, it's a small hobby but a fun one. Make mine Marvel, and enjoy collecting.